children and you know and even our staff we will not put them in danger regardless of the challenges that teachers were facing they were optimistic encourage parents to make the decision that's best for their family this is a special presentation of cbs 4 news ready to return ready to return is supported by Beacon law group and rodeo dental Well, good evening, Valley. Thank you so much for joining us on Back to School, Ready to Return. I'm Chris Jacobs. And I'm Faith Woodard. Tonight, we'll take a look at the plans local districts have in place to keep your child safe this school year. But first, we'll begin with some breaking news. Cameron County Judge Eddie Trevino and the County Health Authority just issued an emergency health control order prohibiting in-person face-to-face instruction for all public and private schools until September 28th. Most schools already delayed start until September and we're planning to seek an extension of the initial four week online transition period. Well, that falls in line with the guidelines issued by the TEA allowing for four weeks of remote learning to start the year with options to extend that instruction by another four weeks. Agency Commissioner Mike Morath speaking on the guidelines that also allow teachers to work from home when possible and outlines how schools should handle cases of the virus. Our school systems, I think, are doing a phenomenal job responding in real time to a rapidly evolving situation. We do know that they need flexibility to make sure that they can, they can get all their procedures well, uh, well executed. The state has provided $200 million in order for districts to be able to provide the tech devices needed for remote learning. Governor Abbott has spoken on the reopening of schools and released the following statement saying in part, quote, the top priority is protecting the safety and health of students, teachers, staff, and families. To achieve that goal, the TEA provided local school boards the flexibility they need to open schools in ways that ensure public safety, while also providing the best education options for students during this challenging school year. The governor also elaborating on measures districts can take in order to protect students and staff. For a full list of those measures, you can head to our website at valleycentral.com. And today is the first day of school for IDEA students, and IDEA is providing laptops and tablets to all 30,000 of them. I spoke with education leaders who say the electronics will keep students safe and ensure every student is graded equitably. IDEA public schools are kicking off the fall with virtual learning. Everyone is adjusting. And all students will be given an electronic device. This can range from, you know, a tablet in the lower grades for our younger learners um, and in a Chromebook for our you know, middle, middle learners, middle school, and then a Dell laptop for our high school students. IDEA says the spring semester was also virtual, a test run for educators, students, and families. We had a lot of great learning going on. Some of our most incredible advanced placement results um, that we've ever had. IDEA hopes results in the fall will be even better. Students are already receiving their devices. So each school has a tech distribution pickup um, schedule that we don't have all of our students there at the same time. Virtual learning now, but there is a chance in-person learning will resume as early as September 8th. Um, we have four weeks right now to, for the all virtual um, to prepare our schools to get ready to accept kids in person. Um, there is the option of extending that for another four weeks. And if students do return to school, IDEA Public Schools will determine which percentage of the student body will come back. We would um, encourage parents to make the decision that's best for their family. Um, we will provide virtual instruction for the entire school year. For those returning, health and safety measures will be enforced and implemented. Working for you, I'm Faith Woodard. McAllen ISD is going 100% virtual for instruction this upcoming school year. And as CBS4 Sydney Hernandez explains, the district says they are ready for the challenges that come with virtual learning. Okay, look at your iPad. Online is the way students at McAllen ISD will be taught for the first four weeks of the school year. All of our elementary schools uh, students have uh, iPads and our secondary students have Chromebooks. Uh, with regard to real-time instruction or what TEA is calling synchronous instruction, uh, we're trying to find uh, the, the right amount of time. We know that the elementary students' attention span it, you know, can't be all day synchronous real-time. So we're trying to find, you know, three hour blocks that don't have to be a consistent three hour block, but we do want our teachers to have face to face time with their students. Regardless of the subject. Hello, Miguel and ISD. Math. Their lessons are all laid out for them on Google Classroom. Fine arts. <laughs> and even PE. Make it do it. Makes us. McAllen is ready. When you're 
you're a teacher, an educator at heart, uh, there's this level of passion that you have within you, this intrinsic motivation that you have within you. So regardless of the challenges that teachers were facing, they were optimistic. After the first month, the district will evaluate if they can go back in person. Our region is a hot spot and, and talking to health professionals, their their capacity issues at our hospitals and things of that sort. So and then we have a tremendous board, so they'll they'll, uh, they'll look at all the factors and then, then they'll make a decision on whether we should extend an additional four weeks or not based on the facts that they have before them. But until then to the staff, to the parents, I want them to know that we are ready. We're a high-performing district and we have been for many years. Uh, the new challenges before us will give us an opportunity to showcase our skill sets in this new environment. And we get powerful in one another. We get inspiration from one another. And right now, the Rio Grande Valley, our strength is our people. And we need to come together as individuals and all do our part to get through this. But one thing that I know for sure is that we will get through this. Superintendent Dr. J.A. Gonzalez says if any employees or students have pre-existing or underlying medical conditions, they will evaluate those on a case-by-case -case basis if they do, in fact, return to campus. Working for you in McAllen, I'm Sydney Hernandez. Now, if a parent works and the child cannot be in class at a specific time, McAllen ISD will also offer pre-recorded courses that can be accessed at any hour by the student. As a result of the pandemic, some families are struggling with the expenses back to school brings. To help, Edinburgh CISD is providing school supplies to help families in need. CBS 4's Tylisa Hampton spoke to the district and has more on what led to the decision. The Edinburgh School District usually starts the school year off with a big bash, but this year, Assistant Superintendent of Curriculum and Instruction, Dalia Guzman, says it will be different. This year we didn't have the opportunity to do that, but we do know that our students need supplies and may not be able to have them to start the school year off. Providing schools with school supplies for every student. We wanted to make sure that our students were off to a good start. We want to make sure that they have all the tools that they need. These supplies will provide just about everything. Got uh, pencil boxes, crayons, glue sticks, scissors, erasers, zipper pouches to keep their things in, pens, folders, notebooks, tape, color pencils, highlighters, just about anything that we could think of that a student would need. Guzman says the district had some money they wanted to use to do it something special. We know that there have been some situations where parents may not be able to afford all the supplies that they might need and so as a school district we want to be able to provide that. There's no need to worry about coming into contact when you pick up the supplies for your child. They already had a plan. And it's going to be a curbside service so students and families will not be getting off their vehicles. The curbside drop-off will begin on August 17th. Dahlia did say all 34 students will have supplies in their hands on day one. Working for you in Edinburgh, I'm Salisa Hampton. Our plants are, are nimble enough and, and they're, they're made to adapt based on the times and the changes of, of, of situations. Coming up, we take a look at the plans Harlingen CISD has and what officials say could be the best case scenario. And one district helping parents adjust to the technology students will be using, how officials are working to make the tech turnaround easier.
Welcome back. As more districts make the shift to online learning, it can be a tedious moment for parents trying to get the computer, laptop, or tablet to work for their kids when they don't know how to use it themselves. CBS 4's Derek Garcia spoke to PSJA ISD superintendent who says he felt the frustrations with online education firsthand and knows it needs to be easier. More than 30,000 students are set to go back to school. Only their homeroom will be their living room. Texas Education Agency allowing schools to begin virtually for the first four weeks. But PSJA Superintendent Jorge Arredondo has a different timeline. To try to see if we can make that, uh, probably extend that to the entire semester. If approved, the district's 4,500 employees are going to have to troubleshoot problems regularly. Dr. Arredondo knows online learning can be hard on parents who don't know how to use websites. And I know I experienced it myself uh, when, when I was trying to help my daughter and I was like, she didn't know her password and who do I call? And I said, well, <laughs> you know, if I'm experiencing help, we need to have a number right there on our website where people can quickly route. The push to keep online learning as the only option is saving lives. As a local community, uh, there are no more, uh, there's no capacity in our hospitals and our, and, and to be able to take care of individuals that just have other, other ailing uh, issues that they may have. And so we're putting our community at risk and we don't want to add to any, any more uh, COVID-19 cases. Not taking a risk with health is a lesson Dr. Aradono doesn't want to learn the hard way. Working for you at PSJA, I'm Derek Garcia. Coming up, while districts deal with getting students in the classroom, the conversation of getting athletes on the field is still looming. Details coming up. We are encouraging school districts to ensure that they provide on-campus access as soon as they can. And TEA officials speaking out on the push for in-person instruction, why they say in-person learning is the best option for students. Well, change is going to be the theme for the 2020 school year. Nothing will seem like normal, even though districts got a taste of what would happen at the end of last year. And when school starts for Harlingen CISD on September 8th, the challenge will be balancing quality and safety. What you saw in HCISD last year is going to be very different in the fall. A new school year usually signals growth and excitement for the community. 
But in 2020, it means preparation and worry for some. For HISD, is we will begin our school year uh, on September 8th, and we will be 100% remote instruction for students. Our plans are are nimble enough, and and they're they're made to adapt based on the times and the changes of. Of, of situations. HCISD Superintendent Arturo Cavazzo says this is the first time he's had to change a school calendar to this degree, but expects remote learning to be close to normal. It's, it's not the ideal, however, uh, we control what we can control. And, and, and we have spent a lot of time over the summer doing what we call an instructional reset and really deep diving into what is the quality of education that we can provide kids on a remote format. And in such an unorthodox time, best case scenario is what most are hoping for. We're gonna be responsive and we're gonna be very methodical in what we do and ensure the safety of our kids and our staff, but more importantly, ensure that we push out a great quality education as well. As the start date to school inches closer, TEA Commissioner Mike Morath is speaking on the agency's push for more in-class instruction. Marath says the push comes as a result of the number of students who do not have devices or internet access at home. He adds that in-class instruction is generally the best option for students. He says the agency is working to ensure districts are able to provide in-person learning. We are encouraging school districts to ensure that they provide on-campus access as soon as they can given the need to make sure that everyone is safe, not just students, but also staff um, um, who, who work in these schools. Are, we've got to make sure that we keep our teachers safe. Marath says while, that, says while the agency has spent close to $600 million in getting technology to lacking areas, he believes students will benefit more from in-person instruction. And Donna ISD is investing millions of dollars in order to provide free Wi-Fi for students. In a release, the district says the school board has approved $3.7 million to provide Internet access to students across the district. The funds are part of an ongoing project that would install 12 Wi-Fi towers in areas where access is limited. District officials say devices will be provided to allow for virtual learning. We hope that by bringing a device uh, to the students, hands and also uh, internet connections, uh, I think that will allow us really to, uh, to, um, to deliver uh, robust instruction um, and first class uh, education to our students while they are staying at home safely. The project is expected to be completed by late September. As COVID-19 case numbers increase in the Valley, school nurses are now taking on new responsibilities to ensure students and staff are safe. CBS 4's Abril Preciado brings us the latest on what students and staff can expect. With a new school year comes new responsibilities for school nurses. We're requiring our school nurses to meet with all of our students via uh, online and have and go over safety measures, the symptoms, hand washing, uh, how to report if they do have any symptoms. That's 33,000 students meeting with a nurse online. That's something that our nurses have never done before. We've never had, you know, they have, they do general sessions during the year, but it's never something to this extent where they have to meet with every individual student. The students will also take their own temperatures on a regular basis during the school year. We're looking specifically at the number of patients that we have hospitalized here, the number of acuity beds that are available. So uh, we're taking that into consideration. So we're taking even uh, more measures than what the state is requiring of us. Sulema Solis, who is the head of the district's health services, says the school is stocking up on personal protection equipment like hand sanitizer, cleaning supplies, and et cetera. We'll have a COVID-19 team at every campus. So that'll consist of, of uh, school employees that will be you know, in charge of, of different uh, different items like with within re, re, revolving co around COVID-19. Just some of the measures to ensure both staff and students are safe. Working for you in San Juan, I'm Abril Preciado. As safety remains top of mind for everyone, many are questioning the idea of districts testing all students and staff for COVID-19 before returning. But some officials say if it weren't for a shortage in testing supplies, it would be something they would consider. We're focusing on the things that we can do because we know there's a huge shortage of tests. You know, even if that was something that we wanted to do, reality is we don't have those available. 
Dr. Perez adds that the, for the time being, Mission CISD will conduct daily temperature checks and is currently working on getting all students prepared for remote learning. Well, state officials have approved the distribution of PPE like masks, gloves, and hand sanitizer to districts across Texas. Last week, the governor was in San Antonio at the state's largest supply warehouse, where personal protective equipment is dropped off, organized, and sent out to districts across the state. The governor says the state is meeting the current supply needs, but there are concerns over matters that could soon strain resources. One is the coming opening of schools in the state of Texas. The other, as we go down the calendar, is the coming flu season, where in addition to uh, people who are testing positive for COVID-19 and taking tests of people, whether or not they do or do not have COVID-19, uh, there will be the need for PPE supplies to also help uh, people deal uh, with flu season. The Texas Department of Emergency Management has already provided schools with over 59 million masks and more than 511 face shields and over 500,000 gallons of hand sanitizer, as well as 24,000 thermometers. Mission CISD is starting off their school year with an online learning model on September 8th, but the constant changing state of the pandemic has made it difficult to plan past the first four weeks. CBS4's Gabby Moreno spoke to Mission CISD Superintendent Dr. Carol Perez to see what they have prepared so far and how those plans may change. For Mission CISD, the road to back to school started in June. It's been a total team effort. Trying to ensure they offered methods of instruction suitable for each student. We sent out uh, surveys, not general surveys, but surveys to the child. You know, because every child learns differently. So uh, the plan is very robust. And providing the tools has been a top priority. We do have a lot of devices in our classrooms that we are pulling to be able to provide those to our families. So we have prepared and we have hot spots that we will be able to issue out. And given the ever-changing circumstances, they will adjust their plans as necessary. This plan is a plan that is a living, breathing document that will continuously be updated based on the conditions with COVID-19, also based on guidance from the Texas Education Agency, our governmental agencies. With plans of offering in-person instruction starting September 28th, the school district wants the community to know they will be cautious. I consider myself a mother of over 15,000 children and, you know, and even our staff, we will not put them in danger. We will not. Read Mission CISD's complete plan on valleycentral.com. Working for you, Gaby Moreno. And One Valley District is supplying their campuses with equipment aimed at disinfecting and limiting the spread of COVID-19. Raymondville ISD has introduced what they called needlepoint bipolar ionizers. They're specialized tubes meant to clean the air and are installed within the HVAC units in all classrooms, hallways, and cafeterias. If there is molecules in the air like, like bacteria or viruses or mold spores, it combines with that ion. And for the virus and the bacteria, when it combines with that ion, it inactivates the virus. Even with this new technology, district officials say they are still going to follow CDC guidelines when returning to in-person classes. And a return to school also brings up the conversation of a return to sports. One Valley doctor thinks we could still see athletes back on the field this fall if done correctly. Daniel Esteve has the story. Remember 2019? <laughs> Eddie Lee Marburger led the Pioneer Diamondbacks to a historic season. We worked together so well that like, it felt like no one could beat us, you know. And as a rising senior, he's still got one more year to do even better. But what if that opportunity just faded away? For someone to take away your season away, I mean, that's tough. But I mean, the, missing the, the bonds with your friends is, the, is the, the thing that hurts the most, I would say. COVID-19 has turned sports leagues everywhere on their heads. The, the problem I think we're going to run into is competing with other school districts in the Valley. Dr. Sujin Gogu used his knowledge as a triple board certified physician in family, sports and pain medicine to develop plans, recommendations and information on sports and COVID-19. Uh, I guess right now the, the most important question is how and when 
could we bring sports back in the fall? I think the socially distanced sports should probably take preference in the fall. But hopefully, you know, by the end of the fall to the beginning of early 2021, we get better therapeutics to combat this virus. Dr. Gogu's plan for the Valley is one fueled by knowledge and a little hope. But don't think he's lost sight of the athletes in the process. We need to open safely, but we need to not lose sight of the fact that, you know, we're losing a lot if we don't have athletics. Working for you, I'm Daniel Esteve. Dr. Gogu also noted the UIL should reevaluate its decision to not require new physicals for athletes in order to participate in the upcoming season. Stay with us. We'll be right back. to make sure you're prepared for the return to school. On our website, we have the latest information from all districts across the Valley. You can head to valleycentral.com where you will find district maps highlighting each district's plans for students and staff. I think we have a couple of our school pictures, our back-to-school pictures. Oh, that's gosh. you, Faith. That's me. Oh. When Mike Jimenez and I had the same barber. Oh, my goodness. Look at my side ponytail. I mean, <laughs> yeah. I was... I thought I was so cool, and uh, not so much. That was the style. It certainly was at the time. Yeah, look at our shirts, man, the stripes and the, and the flowers. Oh. All right, and we want to see your back-to-school photos, whether your child is returning for in-person instruction or virtual learning. You can send your photos as part of our ongoing photo contest. And you can submit your photos on our website. Just go to our website, valleycentral.com, search for back-to-school. That's our time for now. We hope you enjoyed it. Stay safe out there.